And he arose and came to his father. This young man was repentant. He came to understand he had squandered his inheritance with riotous living in sin. And he was starving. He was unhappy. And he felt that he had committed, if not an unpardonable sin, yet a sin that was so grievous that his father would never accept him back as a son. Just let me come back as a servant. If I can't dwell in the family, let me dwell on the estate. Because even the servants have bread enough and to spare. So he rose in repentance and he returned to his father. He went to his father. The Hebrew word is teshuva, to turn. In Greek, metanoia. In English, repentance. What does this mean? It doesn't mean just contrition. It doesn't mean I'm just sorry for what I've done because you may just be sorry because the consequences that you're suffering. Repentance means to change direction, to turn from sin and to turn to Christ as Lord. Jesus says, why do you call me Lord? Well, you do not do the things that I tell you to do. And he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Lordship, salvation. This man arose and came to his father. Maybe you found yourself not living as becomes a disciple. Maybe you've been living a lukewarm Christian life. Maybe you're just trying to find your way back to Christ after being involved in a serious sin or being caught in the bondage of some kind of habitual sin. All of us can find ourselves in some way or other in this parable of the prodigal son. Maybe you know someone who is a prodigal. Maybe a son or a daughter, a niece, a nephew, a cousin, a close friend, a co-worker. And maybe they're still in a far country living with the swine. Or maybe they haven't even hit rock bottom yet. And they're still engaged in riotous living, wasting their inheritance. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. This is the good news. This is the gospel. Our father loves us. He has compassion upon us. And when he sees us afar off coming towards us, he runs out to meet us. He ran, this is the father, and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. This is a confession of sin. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Now think about this for a minute. When we turn to Christ in repentance, and that's what it meant when that son got up and began to journey to his father. That was the teshuva, the metanoia, the repentance, the changing direction. Repentance is an action word. It means to move. It's a journey from sin to Christ. And the father came out to meet him. In fact, he ran to meet him, and he hugged him and kissed him. And he said to his servants, put yourself in this picture of somebody you love. After saying that prayer of repentance, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight am no more worthy to be called thy son. The father said to the servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. We are clothed. In a wedding garment. And what is that wedding garment? It is the righteousness of Christ that we are clothed in. 
Not our own righteousness, but the righteousness which He won for us upon the cross of Calvary. Where God, He looks at us through the shed blood of Christ. It's that wedding garment of the parable of the wedding feast. The men in the sanctuary model that truth for us by wearing these white robes. But more than that, more than that, my brothers and sisters, and put a ring on his hand. This ring would have had the family seal on it. We, when we come to Christ in repentance, are sealed by the Holy Ghost. We are marked. We, you might say we have a spiritual birthmark. Remember we talked about original sin was a spiritual birth defect that we received from our first parents and the fall. But when we come to Christ, we receive another kind of seal. Not a spiritual birth defect, but a spiritual birthmark. When we're born once, we receive that spiritual birth defect. When we're born twice, we become sealed by the Holy Spirit. He dwells in us. And we in Him. And let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. The Holy Spirit, the Son, and the Father cannot be separated. They're separate persons, but they're one God. When we receive the body and blood of Christ in Holy Communion, we're receiving not just Christ, but the Trinity, because they cannot be divided. The Father comes to us. The Spirit comes to us. When we receive the Holy Spirit... The Father and the Son come to us. And the Holy Trinity take up residence within us. And shoes on His, fe on his feet. Remember Corey Ten Boom said that the Lord will either make our path smooth or He'll give us thick-soled shoes to get through the bumps of life. 